every once in a while you come across something you've never seen before and you can't really find very much information about. If it seems useful, you should probably buy it because you might never see one again. This vise is really weird and really cool. This is an Ampo grip vise made by the very generic sounding American Machinery Co. Inc. Uh, makes it hard to Google. I guess they didn't really care about SEO back then. This vise has nine independent jaws on either side and has these levers that are supposed to move and push the jaws back out into the middle. They're pretty locked up right now. The way this is supposed to work, these jaws are supposed to squish back in and conform to whatever odd-shaped object you're clamping in here. There are a lot of really neat details on this. It's actually got dovetail ways on it, and it has these spring steel covers over the screws to keep dirt and grime out. This has a lot of cast iron dust in it. It looks like it was probably used for machining castings. There's a zerk fitting on the back here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's supposed to get oil or grease. We'll get into that a little bit, but I'm going to start breaking this down and get it cleaned up. I did actually find the patent for this online, so I know that inside here it's filled with ball bearings. It looks kind of like little fish eggs, kind of gross, greasy, crusty caviar. Must be steelhead, I guess. This grease is just rock solid. These jaws are all kind of stuck together. You can get them out. The mechanism for pushing the jaws back and forth, I was expecting some sort of eccentric, but it's just a little notch in the thing that pushes the jaws forward. Lots more grease. A couple of snap rings and these slide out. And then just a lot of disassembly. And then just get the rest of this broken down. So after a lot of degreaser and scrubbing, this is what we've got. Uh, most of it's in pretty good shape, just kind of rusty. So can't do a vice restoration video on YouTube without some evapo rust. Pretty sure it's in the user agreement somewhere. So we'll put that in, get that cleaned up. And of course the result, everything looks pretty good. And we'll just do a little time lapse getting this put back together, lots of oil on everything. I had considered painting this, and I had actually gone as far as buying paint for it, but after cleaning it up it's really not that bad, so I think I'm just going to leave it. I always feel like you can leave the patina and paint it later. Once you paint it, you can't unpaint it.
going through this thing, I decided that I'm going to oil the ball bearings rather than put grease in them because ultimately the oil or grease that's going to run out is going to run out the bottom and onto the ways. And I'd rather have oil coming out than grease. And I don't really want that crusty grease in there again. Honestly, one of the hardest parts of this was getting all these little ball bearings or they're not really ball bearings. Some of them are sort of misshapen, but getting these things cleaned up and keeping track of all of them, trying not to lose any. Um, but with a bunch of paint thinner and some WD-40, got them reasonably well cleaned up here. And I hope just any remaining grease, I can just kind of flush out with some of the oil. It's just been nerve-wracking working with these, trying not to lose them. I don't know if this is magnetic or they're magnetic. I think this is magnet, slightly magnetic, which is actually working pretty well. I'll just get some oil in there. Oil them up real well, keep them hopefully moving around well. That'll do it for that side. Well, it's all back together and it's time to make the magic happen. So to reset these jaws, get them all evened up, just pull these levers up. Oh, oh no. That one's binding up for some reason. Well, my nightmare happened. Uh, to figure out why this was binding up, I took the top off. When that happened, this lifted up. Um, some balls got underneath it, so I had to take it out. It also got some underneath there, so now I need to take them all out. They're spilling all over. Try to clean them all up. Get everything out where, get all of the balls out, get all these out, clean it up, put it back together, and try again. So, as I was saying, these levers reset the jaws and then I went and found the most irregular piece of metal I could which is something that would probably be pretty hard to hold in a regular vise uh, so let's see if the magic will happen here now I don't have a real vise handle for this I'm just using this so it's going to take me a little bit of fumbling Probably have some parallels in there, maybe. But I'm not quite sure how you put a parallel in this vise. And there it is. Let's go put it on the mill and see what happens. So as if this thing isn't quirky enough, the fixed jaw is actually on the side with the screw on it. But what that means is, if I have this all the way back against the column on the mill, I can't cut up all the way to the jaw. So I think, I'm going to swing it around, mount it this way. Gets me a couple inches at least, which really isn't that much, but if I really need to, to use the entire capacity of it, I guess I could mount it sideways, 
get into some weird mounting hardware. I can't really put a strap clamp on there because it would interfere with that, so I'd be strapping it there, clamping it down there. But I think for right now, I'm just gonna go this way. And if I need to, I could cut that off a little bit, shorten it up. I also don't really know how you tram this thing or if you tram this thing. I guess you don't really need to since you're working with something that's not square to the world anyway. Probably about as good as it's gonna get. So I got this chuck key. It's one of those came in a box with some other stuff. It's actually a little bit too big to fit the chucks on my lathe. But I think this will be a good thing to put in here. It's going to demonstrate what this vise does well and also sort of the limitations of it because this vise does exactly what it's supposed to do and does it well. It holds irregular shaped parts. But the problem is you don't really run up against something that you need it for that often. If I had V-jaws on a vise, this would fit in there just fine. I could probably press it apart, hold it in a V-block or a collet. Uh, there are a lot of ways to work around doing irregular parts that are going to work just fine without this. So I think the biggest drawback to this vise is it's not going to be that useful that often. Um, something like this. Pretty weird shape, but if you put it in a regular vise, you're still going to get two points of contact here and one there. It's going to clamp in just fine. You can do whatever you need to it. So I think this vise is probably just going to end up sitting on a shelf most of the time. But when I do need it, it's going to be gold.